Um, it's our 9 a.m. and it's already very hot. We're going to be out for a couple of hours turning over rocks, um, searching for calipriates. I'm going to probably walk over the fan. When you're walking over mud flats or um, sandy beaches, sometimes you're going to see little bumps and hummocks in the sand that aren't actually just made by the waves, but there are organisms that are slightly buried just under the surface of the sand of the sediment. And right here we've got a sand dollar. So this is an echinoderm. It's related to things like sea urchins. Um, and you can just, if you want to, you can sometimes gently shake the sand loose turn the animal over. You're probably used to seeing these when it's just a dead test, but this animal is actually alive. You can see this kind of purple velvety covering of little spines that are moving, um, although that's a bit hard to see right now. If we turn it over, sometimes you can see that a little bit more clearly. So if you lift up the animal, its mouth is in the center, and there are these rays of spines that are um, oriented. That helps you figure out that you're um, actually looking at the mouth. They're, they're kind of gently moving right now. The animal is a bit irritated with me for flipping it over. And then um, interesting piercings in the test of the animal called lunules. Um, and it's thought that they help the animal resist lift force um, as waves crash over it or move over it. It helps the animal prevent itself from being um, lifted and carried off the, the, off the sediment. So, so another, thing, another thing you may have noticed when you're walking along especially sheltered bays and mud flats um, are these funky collars um, that they're you pick them up and they're sort of you know they're firm maybe a little bit gelatinous in texture so this is actually a matrix um, with eggs in it it's a um, an egg mass that's created by a moon snail um, big predatory snails that you can also sometimes see gliding across um, the sediment in search of prey um, so there's a lot of sand to give it firmness and then mucus and, uh, and lots of eggs embedded in this. So while it doesn't actually look obviously like an egg mass, you're looking at many thousands of developing snails. Okay, so this is the moon snail, the parent of those egg masses. You can see it's a very smooth, globose kind of a shell. They have a very, very big foot that they plow through the sand. And what happened, of course, when they picked it up, he pulled his foot in. Now that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> very much, and that's impressive. Right at the surface of the sand. Big column. Big oral disc. Sometimes if you go diving or snorkeling in the on the soft bottom like this, it's amazing to see how different it is. You know, all these anemones out and two That's worms right. and things that you don't see at all when it's a low tide. <laughs> that guy's probably pretty big when his tentacles are out. I think so. So this polychaete's moving with sort of a low-frequency gait, and if I disturb him, he immediately moves into his fast-swimming, off-the-bottom sort of escape. Although I've, I've annoyed this one several times already.